FTB Film Study is sponsored by the 409 Tailgate Club. For the best tailgate sauces, barbecue dry rubs, and Bloody Mary mix, visit 409tailgateclub.com today. Today we're going to talk about Penn State against Auburn in the whiteout game. Man, I wish I was at this thing. I'll tell you this. Three things I want to talk about. Number one, your such play calling was phenomenal. Two, Clifford, growth is exponential. And lastly, I want to talk about the offensive line. The unsung heroes. Man, I can't wait to dive into this. Don't forget, like, subscribe, hit notifications. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. All right, so first things first, one of the first plays in the first drive. Now, I know this is a three-man rush on third and seven, but I want to explain to you how important it is to understand that Right now in this framework, you're seeing five offensive linemen versus three defensive linemen. you got five guys doing business, five guys doing work here, and you've got a guard and center working together and a guard and tackle working together, and you have a right tackle who, may I add, is a dude out here who locks up basically an all-SEC D lineman, all right, and he just, lets, he just sets it up, never has any issues whatsoever, doesn't allow for the D lineman to get off these blocks, and Clifford can sit back in that pocket. Really, I want to show you something interesting. Look at the bottom right of my screen, and I'm going to show you how long he has the ball in his hand. He holds the ball, holds the ball, holds the ball, holds the ball, and finally releases this ball. This guy had the ball for seven seconds in his hand before he let go of the ball and wasn't even close to being touched. That is unheard of in Division One football. So impressive for Clifford to keep his eyes downfield as well. Okay. Right here, I want to talk about a, more of a play design thing than anything. And I really want to talk about how Clifford's eyes and his patience with catching the ball off the snap, getting into his play action fake and getting his eyes downfield have improved. This is a simple over route over the second level defenders by the H back or the tight end and a simple read in a play action. But what's impressive is watching Clifford turn his back to us and flip his legs so that he can see what he's about to throw to. Watch him flip his hips. Flips his hips, gets himself back to zero, and he throws an intermediate over the middle crossing route. Now, a lot of people don't understand, but this is one of the hardest throws to throw unless you're like a six foot six behemoth, because you usually sail this ball because you're trying to release it over the offensive line. And he puts this thing right on the money. That's impressive. I want to show it to you from behind because it's even more impressive. Watch the play action. He play actions inside zone. He flips his hips, gets himself around. Now, this looks wide open, and it is wide open. But I want to talk about how impressive it is that he throws that ball over the middle at an intermediate range. Okay, so now in a hurry up, I want to talk about the two vertical concepts they've got going here. He has a vertical concept at the field. He's got a vertical concept at the boundary. He's basically running stack verticals. He knows he's at one high. He knows that they're going to play a lot of man. And so what he's doing is he's going to try to confuse them. Now, Clifford sees the safety at the top of the field right here, and he keeps that safety over there with his eyes. Look at his eyes right now. His eyes are looking to the field, and that safety is going to try to cheat over there. He flips his face, flips his eyes, and sees where he wants to throw it to the boundary. Now, look at how his eyes delivered the safety away from where he wanted to throw. Such a savvy move from a, a veteran quarterback. Okay, again, let's talk about Penn State's game plan. I think that your just did a great job of getting Mesh involved in his game plan as more of an escape valve than anything. And you can tell what he's doing. He's always giving the quarterback like another initial read, and then he allows him to come back to Mesh. Now, how does Mesh work? Well, it's real simple. At some point in time, you're going to have two receivers coming over the middle. It depends on who it is. You're having a receiver here, you have a receiver here. One is picking off for the other. If it's man, they keep running. If it's zone, they sit in a window. Now it takes time for that play to develop. So usually there's something else going on, like a wheel out of the backfield or maybe like a wheel with a post or a sit down over the top. It doesn't matter. There's always another concept involved. Now watch the quarterback size. He's obviously looking to throw the wheel, hoping that this guy was coming off the edge and so that he could drive this into the, into the flat. Now he sees that he doesn't like what he sees right here. He comes back to his second read, which I think was probably this mesh point right here. And he sees that this linebacker was driving down on it. He didn't like it. But watch how he gathers himself, keeps the ball in throwing position, gets across the field, finds dots in the back of the end zone, and throws a dime piece. Okay. Again, Clifford's patience in the pocket, his ability to maneuver and find open receivers has amazed me so far this year. Again, talking about a play action concept, talking about him setting his feet stepping into his throw, delivering a crosser across the middle of the field. Now, there's a couple things I want to show you here. Number one, 
the ability for him to set himself up at seven yards or almost at 10 yards. But really what I think is impressive guys is watch the offensive line play. Look at the clean pocket. Look at the guys going to the ground, right tackle beating 99 again. You've got the tight end getting the defensive end up the field. Guys, this is as clean of a pocket as you're going to get in division one football. And he delivers a strike. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you this ball is high. Yes, it's high. 100% it is. But the problem is he has to throw over a linebacker who bailed late on the play action. So the only place he can put that ball is right here. He also knows his receiver can go get that thing, and Dotson goes up and climbs and gets it. It's impressive to watch the offensive line. It's impressive to watch Clifford's ability to step into the pocket and throw a strike where he knows he needs to throw it. And again, get the ball to your playmakers. Okay, something impressive I hear. I love watching this concept. He has a mesh concept going. He's got a mesh concept from two receivers here, but he also has what he calls just basically a banjo beater. Banjo meaning that this guy and this guy are running man to man. Now they're going to banjo, meaning if these guys were to flip flop and run a vertical switch, like we saw previously, then this kid will just pick this kid up. This kid will pick this up and we're good. And obviously coach here saw this happen. Watch what he does down here at the bottom. He puts these guys together. They touch hands. Okay. And then they separate themselves. And then the quarterback can see that they tried to banjo it. And this is a banjo beater. Fantastic play call. Great catch. Great throw. But even if it didn't work, remember, he's running mesh, so he has a backup plan. If that's not there, 13 is running wide open right down the first down marker, and that's why mesh is a good play for this offense. Here we go. In the boundary, the run game has been so efficient. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the offensive line play, but I also want to talk about Clifford's ability to carry a fake out. Look at the head down. Look at the back turn to the defense. Ball is tucked into the belly. Nobody has a clue. Great job. But really, I think is interesting is watching how he delivers this ball into the flat. Again, most people think it's an easy throw, but it's not when you have a six foot four, six foot five monster coming at you with his hands in the air. Impressive throw and catch. Another great play. Again, quarterback seeing a concept and coming back down. This is not Clifford's first read. Great job. Look at the protection. It's unbelievable. Left tackle gets beat late, but that's okay. Okay, now watch. He sees this thing. He doesn't like something over here. He comes back to the mesh, hits Parker Washington in the window, and you've got yourself a nice situation and a really good play call right here. Okay. Love the patience on the play action. Absolutely love this. Watch him set himself up and ride this ball. Watch him set up. Look at the protection up front, and he strikes another intermediate dig right over the middle. Again, this doesn't seem like much of a ball, but this is a hard ball to throw in the windows you're given. But because the offensive line has been so successful running the ball, they've done a great job with their play action and allowed them to have an easy concept when it came to pass protection. All right, here we go. Looking at the patience, eyes downfield. Clifford uses his legs well. Offensive line is blocking extremely well. This is a four-man rush. Guys, these are all SEC D linemen, and quarterback is just opening himself up. 79, the right tackle for the second time on this film, has done a phenomenal job finishing a block. Clifford gets up the field, strikes the ball to Parker Washington, and his first down. Okay, Penn State does a lot of wide zone. We talked about that in previous videos. They're also going to run a lot of boot action off of it. This is a fantastic job by the quarterback opening himself up and throwing the throwback screen off of the wide zone boot. Great play call. Great job by the tackle coming back and watch the tailback take this thing up the field. Now, it's first and 10 as soon as this ball is set. Yurcich knows that Auburn loves to go man-to-man -man in the situation because it's a quick turnaround. They don't know what's coming, so they're going to get into man-to-man, -man and they're going to bring edge pressure. So what he does is he's going to catch them in a confusion of man-to-man. -man. Watch what he does. In a hurry, he sets everything up. What I love so much about this play, this is the tackle eligible. Knows the tackle's on the line of scrimmage. Knows the two slot receivers are off the ball. It means that this kid is eligible because it's a tight end. Look at the tackle. 79's been working number 99 all night, and now he has the opportunity to play receiver out here. Now he's not an eligible receiver because he's covered, but he's got it bent over. You can't see his numbers. Look at how Auburn is going to play man-to-man -man press, and they're going to bring the house. He's going to bring five off of it right now. Now, all of a sudden, you see the safety down here, number one, going, uh, uh-oh because he knows something's not right. You've got the tight end pop over the middle because the tackle's eligible. You get a huge play. Guys, 
Clifford's game management and ability to do things he hasn't been able to do was exponentially better, but more importantly than anything, the offensive line play was phenomenal. 